Xavi Hernandez has agreed to leave Barcelona at the end of this season. I don't really know how to feel about it. I know a lot of people don't or are, have very mixed emotions about it. So I thought, let's go on here and make a tier list, open up the second channel with a tier list of some of the best moments and worst moments and relive some of our emotions from this time as with Xavi as the Barcelona manager. So we'll, we'll skip right to the tier list that I made. Our tiers are going to be magisterial, you know, some, the best moments. Prime, Peter Drury, messy, magisterial, messy moments. I miss this. It's pretty clear. Look, Barcelona is in a terrible position right now, and I miss a lot of things. And these are some of the things that I miss. Why? It's kind of the beginning, beginning of a, of a terrible time, right? The beginning fumbling mess that I don't necessarily want to relive, but we have to right now. And then depression the lowest of the lows, the lowest moments from Xavi's time here. And uh, let's go right into the first moment. This was B Barcelona's first El Clasico with Xavi in charge, where we won 4 nothing or 4-1, and it was something else, man. That that has to go into magisterial. It was just different. The, the feeling that you got after that match, it, it was like something was relieved. You know, a weight was taken off your shoulders because we had gone through five, six years of Barcelona struggling especially against Real Madrid, but just struggling in general. Maybe not six years, maybe four years, three, four years. And it just was so nice to walk out there and destroy Madrid. That feeling was like no other feeling that I'd, I'd had up to that point as a Barca fan. I became a Barca fan in 2017, so it's been a tough road for me. And just letting you know now, there aren't a ton of moments from Xavi's first season included in this list because there aren't a ton of great or terrible moments from that season. I think a lot of it, the expectations were so incredibly low. I think the fan base did understand at that point that the team was still rebuilding. And so that's just the mentality they had. And so they weren't incredibly destroyed emotionally when the team lost or didn't win points, but they were, the team was just not good enough to create those great, incredible moments or win any trophies or anything. But one thing I do have in here is the Eintracht Frankfurt loss. That was just depression for me. Um, I, I, for me and, and, and for a lot of people, I think it was just, it was, it was tough to see Barcelona not get any support from Spanish or European fans. I, I, I'm 6,000 miles away from the camp. No, but, and I understand why those fans wouldn't want to go to those matches where your team is fighting for La Liga and struggling in the Europa League. And that's not Barcelona. That's not the team I support. I understand that. But I don't agree with that. I think the fact that the Camp No was basically an away match because there were so many Eintracht Frankfurt fans there, that's unacceptable. And that is a low point as a Barcelona supporter. And I'm disappointed in us that that happened. Now, this is when Gavi won the Copa Trophy in this picture here, but it basically just represents the development of Gavi as a player. I don't think it happens the same way without Xavi. I think he's a huge, huge character, and it, it definitely helped Gavi's development to work under him. Um, Gavi is is an incredible player, and I don't think he's the same player without Xavi. There, there's a reason everybody was so distraught when the kid got injured. He had so much potential. And this season, he was going to be amazing because he already was. This team, I speak about it in my Gavi video, but... It doesn't work the same without Gavi anymore. They cannot press. They're basically useless. And so I miss this. We're skipping the summer where Barcelona signed Robert Lewandowski and, you know, make some moves, look a little bit more competitive. They have Jules Koundé and the team looks a little bit organized. They shed a little bit of weight. And now they're going into the season, right? Well, that excitement gets basically destroyed immediately with the draw for the Champions League and then their performance right here against Bayern Munich in that first match a low moment i'm gonna put it in why because there was still some potential after that match right we still could have qualified while losing to Bayern, so that wasn't the lowest point it was it showed barca's mentality right it showed us still struggling and not being at the top of our game the way we have been in years past i think a different barca team wins that game that barca team they didn't have any shots on goal that match but i believe they definitely did not deserve to lose three nothing they had a lot of really good chances. Robert Lewandowski was terrible that match. Uh, Dembele was fouled in the box. That was not a pen, but that was definitely a pen every day of the week by Davies, but whatever. It, to me, that's a game that sticks out to me. I don't know if that's going to be the same to you, but that, that hurts because that ruined any momentum in that competition that season. And I think that game is a really key reason why the next problem happens 
the capitulation against Inter Milan. That 3-3 mess, and we've got PK representing it. To make that mistake, put his arms out with Lautaro Martinez running behind him. That is in my nightmares. Uh, I, I cannot believe he did that. I'm still upset about it. Clearly, I'm still talking about it to this day. And it, it symbolized where Barcelona still was. It, it showed that despite everything, despite all the signings, all the money, they somehow pulled out all the levers. There's still this team that can't succeed in the Champions League. And it, it definitely hurt uh, a lot <laughs> as a Barca fan that moment. And I, I'm not putting that all on Xavi. Obviously, uh, he couldn't help that Araujo was injured and... Eric Garcia and PK had to start at center back. He can't do anything about that. that it, it is what it is. But it's a moment that happened during Xavi's tenure. Just like the next moment, which is Barcelona's first trophy in a very long time. The Super Copa win. Right now, seeing as it, how we might go trophy list this season, I really miss this. That was, not only was it special because it was against Real Madrid, but just getting that silverware, show, proving to us that we could win a trophy and, and be good again, and Xavi finally getting the merits for his work, the quality for his work, it was, it was important to me, and I think it was important to the squad as well, and it was definitely important to Xavi. And I don't think we win that match without Xavi in. Now we got one of, pro this is probably my favorite moment overall with Xavi as the manager, but it's the Clasico where Kessier scores that like last minute winner. Not only do I, I got to put that in Magister. I'll put that below the Aubameyang uh, 4-0. Man, that, that was just something else. I, I Watching that match, I, I, f I lost my mind. Like I'm sure everybody did. But the, the fact that Kessier was able to pull that through with how rarely he had been utilized the entire season. I love him as a player. I think he's fantastic, and I feel terrible the situation that he's in, but I am appreciative of him for leaving Barcelona and, and letting us get 15 million euros in return. Um, but he, he's a good guy, and huge, incredible moment for Xavi, for the boys. It was special, but I'm going to say not as special as Barca winning La Liga. That has to be just first league title since 2019 it's not something to say lightly or to take lightly that's a big deal for us to have the squad do that with the guys they had yes they had they spent a lot of money Stegen stood on his head the back line was incredible Kunde, Araujo, Christensen and Balde were all very good defensively and clearly we're missing that solidity right now we're seeing how much we were bailed out by that back line by their capacity and that includes Ter Stegen, maybe more than any of the other defenders, we're seeing how big of a deal that is today. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that too much, but um, it's it's progress in the right direction, and I, I'm glad Xavi was able to exper experience that. Now, uh, uh, this has got to go on uh, the top of I miss this. Xavi was. Uh, this was the five nil victory over Real Betis, and the five nil, and and the following five nil victory over Royal Antwerp. Those two games at the beginning of this season were, I, I don't know how it felt for you, but I just remember feeling like this team can do anything. And I haven't felt that in so long, especially without Messi in this side. To know, to feel like this squad can dominate everyone. Yeah, yeah, it was short-lived, sure. But I, it, was, it was a feeling that I had because the team was performing well. It was, that's the proof that Xavi's management, that his abilities works them winning that those matches show that when Xavi has the profiles he needs and they're playing well it is incredible right when they all connect well together and they're all on their game and they're all playing the right position it can be incredible his system is good and can be good and was good for us some things need to happen right I spoke about it in my last video he needs to experiment he needs to change a little bit but I'm not gonna rant about that I've ranted enough about that in my live streams and everything but last up is overall Chavi, right? What are we going to think of Chavi after this season? And what do I think of him now? Right now, I, I'm, I'm putting him in. I miss this. I, I think to ask of him to win us the Champions League or win us La Liga every season and be incredible, it's unrealistic with the financial barriers on this club. But overall, I think I have him probably at the bottom of I miss this right now. After this season, I think it's either going to stay exactly where it is or it could 
reach magisterial. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and say they're going to win the Champions League. Uh, that's unrealistic, but teams get lucky draws all the time, and we're going to beat Napoli. I just watched them lose or draw with Lazio today. Uh, they're not great at all. If we write off La Liga, all you got to do is find a system that somehow works. And if somehow we make a run, God forbid, we make a run to the Champions League final, like that's optimistic, right? It's not impossible. And I don't think a lot of teams are really solid in the world right now. I don't think there are a lot of really good teams. Man City is struggling a little bit. They're, they're not at the top of their game. Arsenal fumbling a little bit. Liverpool looks solid, but they just had their coach announce that he's leaving. So how's that going to affect them? You know, maybe the same as Barca, who knows, but it's out there. Bayern also not perfect right now. Look, and in Italy, we could talk about Inter Milan. They're playing pretty consistently, and I want to give them credit for that. These are just some thoughts I have, right? These, these are just some ideas in my tiny brain that make me feel like this season could get interesting, and, and, and I'm going to stay hopeful. Yeah, let me know what you guys think if I missed any important moments. Uh, I think I think this is a pretty good roundup of the, the feelings that I had throughout the seasons. I definitely missed small, intricate moments, but I, I think I covered the basis of not only the most important parts, but just emotions of each season, each like period that Xavi coached and managed over. But let me know if I missed anything. But thank you for watching the, the inaugural video on Robbie Lou too. There's going to be more casual stuff like this with less editing and, and that I can just pump out easily easier so I can be a little bit more connected with you guys. I want to make more content, but it's just hard when I have to spend two days editing a video. But thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.